Gilliland want the dog to the quality of a great smile and offer three locations to help serve you better. Visit them in Oxford, Tupelo, and their new office in South Haven. Dr. Bishop, Dr. Gilliland, and their staff have over 100 years combined experience. They're offering complimentary consultations to all fans, specializing in both children and adult braces, and are Invisalign certified. Call to the appointment. Dr. Bishop, Dr. Gilliland, staff, the best to all our area teams. And welcome back to the Fayette Commodore football right here on Low Channel 97. Ronnie Williams, Denny Tosh, and Stephen Beebe here from Bald Hemway Stadium, home of the Ole Miss Rebels. And Denny, what a facility it is for these high school kids to get to play in. The coach Harder about it earlier in the week, Ronnie, and you mentioned it to him. And he, he said, well, it's not really much for my players. They have to practice every day. So, but I know these visiting teams that come and they really enjoy playing in this yeah, well, type of atmosphere. We saw Lewis from the wide-eyed walking up into the stadium. Got to be exciting to get to see the stadium that the Rebels play in. You can see it on TV. So first and 10 now for the Wildcats at the 28-yard line. As Kerry Miller, quarterback, goes under center. I formation in the back. Here's a snap handoff to the second back through. That's Frazier. Frazier still on his feet, kind of pushing, pushing. They're going to say 33-yard line is where his momentum stopped. A five-yard pickup right there. The Fayette's defense really doing a good job these first series of keeping Louisville from doing much of anything as far as running the ball, Ronnie. You have to see Louisville try to throw the ball. Still early in the ball game, 4.37 left here in the first quarter. 7-0. Second and five, the ball at the 33. Miller's under center. Receiver out. Far left, another receiver right. Tight end left. High formation behind him. There's a snap handoff to Frazier. Frazier gets up to the 35, 36 yard line. They're going to say 37. So about a four yard pickup from Frazier. He's ran back to back. Dennis. He's picked up about nine yards on this drive. They're going to bring up third and one. Last third and short we saw that the Wildcats ran. They did a good job of getting back there and making the stop. Third and one. Lead number three. Andre Hutchins made the stop last time for the Commodores. So, Frazier and Eichelberger, the only two to carry the ball so far for the Wildcats. Hand off to Frazier, and he's not going to get it. He's going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And they're going to mark him out at the 38-yard line, going to give him about a yard, Denny, and, but not enough for a first down. Big hit that time by number 47 for the Commodores, Marquino Lee, the big defensive tackle for the Commodores. He stepped up and made a huge stop. As it's going to bring up fourth and about, about less than a yard, Ronnie. Fourth and less than a yard, and it looks like the Wildcats are going to go for it from their own 37-yard line. It's got to be careful with the long snap count here. As Louisville might try to draw them off sides and then call a timeout. Frazier's the only back backfield as Miller goes under center. Here's just have to hand off to Frazier, and he is going to slip around the end across the 42-yard line. And pick up a first down. Nice play by Frazier as he hit the middle, Denny. Nothing there, so he took it to the outside and picked up the first down. Bounced off a couple of fake Commodores, got to the outside, picked up about three, just enough for the first down. That's a gutsy call that time by the coaching staff of Louisville. As if the Commodores would have stopped them, they would have had excellent field position. So he has been there. 23 yards on five carries so far is Stanley Frazier. Miller goes under center. He's going to drop back this time. Here comes a rush. He's going to hit his receiver at the 40. Slips tackle, and he is still on his feet across midfield to the 45. And it looks like there's going to be a face mask come out. As Eichelberger, or actually... Ernie Triplett on the reception. 13-yard pickup that time on the reception, but it's going to add on, tack on more with the face mask. It's going to look like it's going to be a five-yard face mask. That was on Justin Wood all over the Commodores as he got there. Tried to make the tackle, but just put his hand a little too close to that face mask. Like you said, 15 yards add on the face mask. Looking at first and 10 at the 38. Miller under center, eye formation in the back. 
behind him. Stands up, changing the play. Chris Welsh, the fullback, in front of Stanley Frazier, the tailback. There's the pitch out to Frazier, and he's going to slip down as he tries to cut it back inside, and he's going to slip down at the 38-yard line. Going to be a no gain that time. Maybe a little bit of a pickup, but they're going to keep it at the original line of scrimmage. He's going to bring up second and 10 for Lewisville. Second and 10, balls at the 38-yard line. Wildcats trying to keep a drive going that started back at their own 28-yard line. Now down to the Commodore 38. Shotgun formation this time for Miller. And there's a flag. Sideline warning is what's going to be called against the uh, Louisville Wildcats as the coach was out on the field. We've seen that a lot with both teams, both Oxford and Lafayette. Start the play over again. Second and 10 ball at the 38-yard line. Miller in shotgun formation with Welch and Frazier on each shoulder. Michael Berger wide left. Here's a snap handoff to Frazier, and he's going to be dropped at the 37-yard line, but there is a flag in the backfield of the Wildcats. It's going to be an illegal block against the Wildcats, and that's going to bring the ball back. So they're going to back it up from the 41-yard line is where they'll mark it from. It'll be a 10-yard loss. So that's going to bring it back now to back across the 50 and put it at the 49-yard line. Well, actually, about a 13-yard loss, so you're looking at second and about 23, Danny. Ball spotted back at the 49 yard line. A long way to go now for the Wildcats. Promising drive, and the penalty has pushed them way back. Miller under center takes a snap. He's going to hand off to Eichel Berger, but here comes another flag. We've seen a lot of flags thrown tonight early, Ronnie. So trying to take advantage early on. The all sides against the defense. That's the third penalty for the Commodores tonight. They have three for 20 yards. So the Wildcats a little bit back from the last penalty they had. Going to bring up at about 18 for Louisville. Ball's going to be at about the 46-yard line. 46. So, second and about 18 now for the Wildcats. Miller goes over, talks to one of his receivers, comes back under center. Hands off, fakes it to Eichel Berger. And here comes the big run from the Commodores. And here comes a very late flag. Looks like they're going to throw it again. A couple of different Commodores were there. Ball tips. That flag will not be. I believe they'll, they'll call it tips. That will be a no, no call there, Ronnie. The referee right on top of it. Wave the flag off. Incomplete pass. Third and 18 now at the 46. Played Danny by that Commodore defensive line to get back there. Applying some pressure, and number three Andre Hutchins was there, almost picked it off. And he had nothing but clear real estate in front of him. He would have taken that one to the house, probably, Ronnie. Big Daniel Edwards, number 70, back there, got a hand up. Adam Young, the defensive end. Andre Hutchins, one of the linebackers, has been on the hit. So third and long, Miller's dropping back. He's looking downfield. He's floating one. Ivy's back. <laughs> going to pick the ball up back at the 12-yard line for the Commodores as Desmond Ivey picks up an interception. We saw him return one against Holly Springs, didn't he? But this time, just a big pick to go back and get it at the 11. I'll tell you what, Ronnie Ivey, I thought he jumped a little too early there, but he went up and got that ball, took it away from the receiver because he was clearly beat, but a good catch at the time, good interception by number two for the Commodores, Desmond Ivey. 
A fatal start. First and ten. At the yard. We have two seconds left here in the first quarter. We'll fail leading seven to nothing over Louisville. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Commodore Commodores have 88 yards to go before they're going to put some points on the board, but we've seen them on offense all year long. Ryan really doing a good job of moving the football. Yeah, they've moved all over the places. Josh Fodron in the backfield is going to take pitch, cuts back inside. Not a whole lot there. He's going to get to the 10, and that's going to be about it. That's going to be the last play of the first quarter, Denny. And so after one, the Fed Commodores are up over the Louisville Wildcats. Seven. We'll be right back after this with Lafayette Commodore football. On this job, you know things. Like the Steak Fanatic Pizza. It's a big hit with the guys. Steak Fanatic Pizza. Mm hmm. Man, cool. Hey, hey, hurry up. Only 23 figures in the tank. There's statues. There's statues. Introduce Domino's new Steak Fanatic Angus steak, pile on more steaks, smothered in cheese. Buy a medium for just $9.99 and heap on even more. Angus steak for just two bucks. At the door, it's Domino's new Steak Fanatic Pizza. Furniture World, home of the better buys on better brands. Names like Sir Roy Hill, Clayton Marcus, Bassett, Action Lane, Hickory Hill, and Ashley. Serving comfort in the surrounding area for 30 years. Furniture World has free delivery within six miles and no interest financing with a free credit. Come see Betsy Alloway for all your home furnishing needs at Furniture World. And welcome back to Bob Hemingway Stadium. Well, the Fayette Cowboys, for Louisville Wildcats, zero. A nice first quarter there for uh, the Commodores. Put a couple of drives together and then they stop Louisville on a big drive here. Big stop is number two, Desmond Ivey, coming away with the interception right there at the end of the first quarter. As Lewis was threatening. So here's the Commodore, second and 12. Woodall drops back. He's got Ivey, and Ivey's going to drop the ball at the 15-yard line. I think he thought about running with it before he caught it. I'll tell you what, Lewis came in here with their game plan. As we've seen Lafayette do all year long, Ronnie, you want to keep Lafayette's offense field as much as you can because I tell you what, dangerous when they get out there. They score, they score often when they're on the field. This will might try to run some of this clock and maybe try to beat it at the end. Well, that's the first incompletion of the night, of course. But all that was only a second pass. He's one, two for 16 yards. Now, Ricky Wallington back in the field. The Commodores are going to put three receivers at the wide side of the field. Commodores are going to burn their second time out of the night. We will take it with them. 11.56 to go in the first half. Lafayette leads 7 to nothing. We're back right after this. Lawson. Business turn to One Day Signs. One Day Signs has the state-of-the-art computer technology and skilled manpower to create and install your new sign, banner, vehicle lettering, window lettering, magnetics, logos and graphics, wood signs, plastic and plexiglass. They also can custom create your game banners and party posters your favorite picture. One Day Signs probably serve the Oxford and Batesville areas. Get it done right. Get it done quick. Get it done at One Day Signs. Fayette Commodore 7, Louisville Wildcats 0. Ronnie Williams, Denny Tosh, and Stephen Beebe live from Bald Hemingway Stadium. Jerry Hollinsworth Field on the campus of Ole Miss. Third and 12 for the Commodores at the 10-yard line. One back in the backfield is Wildington. Woodall is under center. There's a the snap. Woodall dropping back. Here comes a run. He still gets a pass off. It's going to be picked off at the point yard line. Bringing it back, and he's going to get up to about the 13 yard line. And that is going to be a huge interception. Number 22, Dion Kickman. Now they have back returning kickoffs, but he picked that ball off that time, Ronnie. Not a good pass. By Justin Woodall, he threw that into a triple coverage. And the Louisville defense made him pay. As they have excellent field position. They'll take over first and 10 at the Commodore 12-yard line. And he's trying to get it to Dacus Miller, Denny, and he just tried to rush it in there. He's had a pretty good rush on him. And 
22 stepped right in front of 22, and he took it back to the 12. So third to 10 at the 12-yard line. I formation behind Miller. There's a snap, hands off to Frazier. Frazier gets to the line of scrimmage, puts the ball on the ground, fumble, and it looks like Miller's going to come away with it back at about the 18-yard line. Dangerous play for Frazier. Dangerous play, good hustle at time by number seven, Ricky Wobbington of the Commodores. He went in there and tried to come up with that ball. But it was retained by the Wildcats of Louisville. Miller doing a nice job of finding that football after it was dropped and falling on top of it. Second and 15 now. The ball's back at the 17-yard line. Commodores, nine quarters without giving a score, Denny. They don't want to end that streak right here. There's Miller. Going to pitch out to Frazier. Frazier coming around the backside, blocking the back, and it's not going to be called as he cuts up to the 20-yard line. Referee standing right in front of it and did not call it. Didn't call, but a good tackle that time by number 44, Jimmy Phillips of the Commodores. And I'll tell you what, Ronnie, number 12, Kerry Miller, the quarterback, was hit hard as he pitched that ball by one of the Commodores. So third and 18, the ball's going to be put back at the 20-yard line. Don't want to get on the officials, but kind of hard to believe he missed that one right in front of him. He was standing right there. So high formation behind Miller. He's going to stand up, look over, and he's going to call a timeout. So the Wildcats are trying to put something on the board here. 10-17 to go in the first quarter. And we'll be right back. The Commodores leading 7 to nothing. We're right back on Lowson. You get a lot of products thrown your way. Here's the delivery. One is clearly the best. He connects. Digital cable with hundreds of channels, 24-hour sports coverage, exclusive technology like video on demand. Satellite doesn't have it. And the Internet speeds match even the most die-hard fantasy. This season, come home to cable. And that's the ball game. The Square has served the Oxford University community for 39 years. The largest screen printer and monogrammer in the area. University Sporting Goods has full-time graphic artists on staff to help you with your ideas. A team dealer with lines from Nike to Under Armour and Adidas to Zephyr. Look at University Sporting Goods for jerseys and bats, balls, and hats. Come by and visit our newly renovated space and see a wide selection of Ole Miss t-shirts and gifts. Others come and go, but for quality service and great value, come by University Sporting Goods on the Oxford Square. Absolutely no dogs allowed. And welcome back to Vault Hemingway Stadium as we've got a few extra seconds ticked off the clock and they're trying to put it back up to about 10, 15 maybe is what they're looking at. So Denny, the Commodores have gone nine consecutive quarters without giving up a score as Shaw got across the 50 one time last week. And Louisville is threatening here at the 20. Of course, they were at the 12, but they've gone backwards steadily. It's put 92 points on the, the first two games. They beat Holly Springs 41 to zero. Came back two weeks later and beat the Shawhawks 51 to nothing. Now they have seven points. So with nine quarters of football, Ronnie, the fade has put up 99 points on their opponents. That's Take your hat off to Eric Robertson, the defensive coordinator for Lafayette. As he's had some really good game plans so six, for his football team. 16 yards of total offense here for the Wildcats in the first half. Now they have it third and 18 at the 20-yard line. Miller goes under center. Fakes the handoff. Here comes the Commodore rush. He's got a man in the end zone, throws it, and it's going to be out of bounds, but he was covered down there by Young of the Commodores, and I don't believe he had a chance of completing that one. The Wildcats might have got away with another block in the back as number 64, Timothy Love, was there. The official, as we said, Ronnie, he was there also. He just missed another call. It's going to bring up fourth and 18, the ball at the 20-yard line. He was trying to hit Clint Coleman down in the corner of the end zone. Would be a 37-yard field goal if they attempted it here. Doesn't look like they're going to. Zach Young with some 
Excellent coverage, but the ball sailed out of bounds. So here is Kerry Miller, the quarterback, goes under center with Welch and Frazier in the backfield. Two receivers left, and we're going to get a delay of game right there. So Denny, they do have two 25-second clocks working here in the back of each end zone. And Miller just let it get away from him. Well, that's a big plus if you're a quarterback. You like to have that to where you can see instead of having to look at the back judge who will give you the signal there when the time's getting close. So fourth and 23 now. Ball's at the 25-yard line. Miller under center. There's a snap. Fakes the handoff to Frazier. He's looking to the corner of the end zone. He's got his man down there. It's going to be knocked down. Desmond Ivey goes up and knocks the ball down. It was intended for Emmanuel Thomas, and the Commodores will take over at their own 25, Denny. They dodge a bullet. They dodge when they run it. Good job by Desmond Ivey. He just waited till the ball got there, did not make any contact with the receiver, but as the ball was sailing towards him, just jumped up and just knocked it out of bounds. So a good defense at that time, not only for the Commodores, but also for number two, Desmond Ivey. Well, here come the Commodores, first and 10, the ball at their own 25-yard line, so they dodged the bullet on the interception from Woodall. 9.53 left here in the second quarter, Lafayette leading 7 to nothing over Lewisville. Josh Fondren, lone back in the backfield, two tight ends set here for the Commodores. Little movement on the left end for the Commodores, that's number 8. Michael Burnett jumped a little bit from the tight end spot. Something that Coach Hart talked about during the coaching show, Ron. He does not like when his team has penalties, and he will not be happy. That's the fourth penalty of this half. Four penalties for 25 yards for Burnett, the Commodores. Burnett's going to check out. Two receivers right. Fondren lone back in the backfield. There's a snap to hand off to Fondren around the right side. Up across the 20, 21, 22 yard line, 21. It's going to pick up one. It's going to bring up second and 14. Good stop that time by the Louisville defense. They didn't look real good that first series. The Commodores had the ball right, but they ever since then they've come out and really got after them. Third carry for Fondren for six yards now. Wadlington's been the workhorse. He's got 25 yards on four carries. He's back in there. Second and 14, ball at the 21. 9.17 to go in the first half. Miller goes in motion. There's a snap. Woodall's going to keep it. He's up dragging players across the 25 to the 28-yard line and going to pick up about seven, and that's going to bring up third and long for the Commodores. Good run that time by Justin Woodall. is going to bring up third and about seven for Lafayette. Trying to pick up first down here. Two receivers in for the Commodores. Desmond Ivey, Andre Hutchins, and number four, Zach Young, all just checked in for Lafayette. Third and a long six. For the Commodores, Woodall goes under center. Two receivers left, fakes the handoff. He's got a rush on him. He's going to fire it. He Rid of it right over Desmond Ives' hands and through the defensive back of Louisville. And uh, that was Ernie Triplett who could have got his hand on it, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So the Commodores, Danny, could not move the ball on that possession. Tell you what, Ryan, that's a tight spiral that went all through just a little high as, it, as Ivy went up to try to catch it. Did get his hand on it, just couldn't bring it in. So Taylor Maddox standing back at the 15, ready to punt for the Commodores. And there's a the snap. Well, bobbles it. He's going to get it off, but barely. Don't know how he got that one off. It's going to hit the bounce, and it's still rolling back to the Louisville 34, 33-yard line. How he got that ball off, I don't have a clue. That was a 41-yard punt after the bounce. But I'm going to tell you what, as you said, he had four or five Louisville defenders on him. I don't know how he got that ball off, but a good punt that time and a good roll for the Commodores. So first and 10, the ball is going to be placed at the 33-yard line of Louisville. 
Different quarterback in the game now for Louisville. That's number three. That's Daniel Eichenberger. He's going to hand off to his first back through the fullback, and he's going to punch it up to about the 36-yard line, so a gain of about three. Going to bring up second and seven for Louisville. Actually going to say you only got two. They're going to put it at the 35. So, Eichel Berger, the in at quarterback, Frazier, the lone tailback. There's the handoff. Oh, nope. Eichel Berger's going to keep it. Hit mark. Ball's on the ground. The car it up. That's Ricky Wylington. He's going to take it in the end zone. Touchdown, a 28-yard Touchdown return for the Commodores. Just like Denny, the defense scores, and they're up 13 to zip. Big hit by big Marquino Lee of the Commodores, and a nice pickup by number seven, Ricky Wellington, as he picked the ball up and returned it 28 yards for the touchdown. And that's what you want if your coach Eric Robertson and your defense really did a nice job there. Put some points on the board, and Lafayette now leads 13 to zero over the Wildcats. So Maddox is on for the extra point. And the Commodores. A name you've heard a lot all year, Ronnie, is number 47, Marquino Lee, just a junior. Snap the kick, it's up, and it is good. And like that, the defense picks up a big break here for the Commodores, and they lead 14 to nothing with 7.25 go in the first half. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with more Lafayette County football right here on Lowson. University Avenue in Oxford has all of your fall planting needs. Beautiful garden mums in many sizes and colors. Trees of all kinds. Shade trees, ornamental trees, and fruit and nut trees. Shrubs and ground covers of all kinds. And don't forget the fertile home winterizer, with or without weed control. While visiting the garden center, be sure to see our exciting new lines of giftware and interior decor. We're open every day at the Garden Center in Oxford. Well, the Commodore defense steps it up and creates a turnover. And Ricky Wadlington returns it 28 yards for a touchdown. And now Taylor Maddox is on to kick off for the Commodores with 7.25 to go here in the first half, leading 14 to nothing over the Louisville Wildcats. Another player we need to talk about. Is the kicker for Lafayette, Ronnie. We've heard a lot of him all year is Taylor Maddox. Doing an excellent job. The little pooch kick once this time taken by Thomas at the 28. He's going to get to the 30-yard line, and he's going to be dropped right there. So they're doing a good job of keeping it away from Michael Berger and Clint Coleman because they know those guys can return it. Well, they did their homework. That's exactly what Coach Hart told Taylor to do, just try to kick it here to the sideline. And that's exactly what he's doing. So Miller will come back in at quarterback. Frazier is going to be the lone back in the backfield. Ken Allen. I'm sorry. Uh, Hendrick and Eichelberger go wide left for the Wildcats. Snap. He's going. Miller's going to keep it. Gets to the 32-yard line and Jamie Phillips and Chris Gibson on the stop for. The Commodores. Big stop that time. Going to pick up about a yard on the play. Going to bring up second and nine. We have seven minutes left here in the second quarter. Lafayette leading 14 to zero over Louisville. And second and nine. The ball is at the 32-yard line. And Miller goes under center this time. An eye formation with Welch and Frazier behind him. Two receivers left, tight end right. There's a handoff to first back through. That's going to be Welch. Punches it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Pick up about four. Big third down play coming up here for the Commodore defense. We'd like to try to stop Louisville here, get the ball back with some pretty good field position. Player for that Commodore defense is on the field tonight, number two, Desmond Ivey. Has one interception, one ball that was he knocked down. Here's a snap to hand off to Frazier. Pretty good had a run and start, and Frazier's going to get up close to a first down. They're going to mark him right at across the 40 
going to be very close to a first down. Depending on depending on the spot, they're probably going to have to go ahead and do this one. As, as you said, Ronnie, the ball is right there by the first down marker. So we're going to see what the call is, and the referees are going to take a timeout. They're, they're going to measure the ball first, and then we'll get the heat timeout. So we'll, we'll keep it here till we see the measurement. Referee Bill Cowan calling for the chain crew to come out. It's going to be very close. It's going to be Denny about a half a yard short. So it's going to bring up fourth and about a half a yard. And when we come back, the Wildcats will have the decision to make on fourth and short. We'll be right back. 5.52 to go in the first half. Commodore 14, Wildcats nothing. We're back right after this. You'll find friendly professional service from the bank that's served Lafayette County for over 94 years. As our community's grown, we've expanded with more locations in Oxford than anyone else. The University Branch in West Jackson, the North Lamar Office, the newly renovated Medical Center Office at Highway 6 in South Lamar offers drive through and lobby service and a convenient drive-up ATM. And our main office on the square, where we've held a presence since 1910. When you're ready for a bank as deeply committed to Lafayette County as you are, you're ready for First National Bank of Oxford. In short, as the Wildcats line up to go for it, there's the handoff, and he's going to be across the first down marker. Ball comes shooting out, but they're going to say he was down. He's going to get up to right across the 42-yard line. That's the fullback, Welch, and he's going to pick up the first down. Third first down tonight for Louisville. Big third down play that time. Actually, fourth down play that time, Ronnie. So Welch picks up two. That's going to bring up first and ten for the Wildcats. 5.30 to go in the first half. Commodore's up 14 to zip. And still have yet to give up a touchdown this year and try not to now, Denny. There's the handoff to Miller. Here comes a new back. He's going to be across the 45, 46-yard line for the Wildcats. That's going to be Deion Kickman on the carry. Good that time for Kickman. Picks up about four yards on the play. Had a player down for Lewisville. I believe that's number 53. Reggie Nunn. 51. 51. Will McKenzie. So holding on to that one of his ankles, maybe. About a four yard pickup there for number 22. Kickman had the big interception for the Wildcats a couple of possessions ago. And that's going to bring up second and about six for the Wildcats. Yeah, the Commodore defense kind of let them, once they got the ball down at the 10-yard line, the Commodore defense stepped it up and backed them up and uh, couldn't come away with anything. Commodore defense really doing a good job, not only this game tonight, but all season long, Ronnie. So Miller goes under center. All right, he's going to back up into the shotgun with backs on both shoulders. There's the snap, the hand off to Frazier. Frazier's going to be up to midfield, and that's going to be about it as Jamie Phillips is going to drive him into the ground right at the 50, about a four-yard pickup on the play. Going to bring up third and about three for Louisville. Ball spotted right at it about midfield. Miller trying to direct the Wildcat offense. Takes the handoff. He's going to keep it himself this time. Turns up field. He's got the first down. And he is hit, and the ball comes shooting out. Justin Woodall laid the wood to Miller, the quarterback. He is still down. Woodall absolutely stuck him, Denny, as he had the first down. But the ball was knocked out of his hands all the way back to the 47-yard line. It's going to bring up fourth down. Tell you what, Woodall did put the lumber on him, Ronnie, as he hit him hard. 
knocked the wind at him as the quarterback number 12, Kerry Miller, getting up. I don't know if he wanted to get up after that one. Ball's going to be marked back at the 47. So he had the first down, but he's going to wind up losing three yards on the carry. So fourth and six, there's the punt. And Ivy's going to take it at the 20. Ivy has returned a couple for touchdowns this year. Not this time, as he's not going to get anywhere. Gets to the 20, and that's going to be it. 34-yard punt that time for Louisville. Lafayette will have the ball first and 10 at their own 21-yard line with 3.09 left here in the second quarter. Lafayette leads 14 to nothing over Louisville. A four-minute drive for the Wildcats and came away with nothing. So the Commodore. I'm not going to say have been in complete control, Denny, but they really, other than the one time that uh, the Wildcats picked the pass off, they really haven't threatened. Haven't threatened. Haven't seen their, their offense came out of the gates firing, but you haven't seen much out on these last couple of drives. Hopefully they can get something going here late in the second quarter. So Woodall drops back in shotgun formation. He's got Fondren on his left shoulder, and he's going to fake the handoff and he's going to keep himself. He gets back up to the line of scrimmage. Going to drop him at the 22, so Woodall's only going to pick up a yard on the carry. Got to do a better job of tucking that ball. Looks like the Louisville defenders were going in there trying to knock that ball loose. This Woodall picks up about one on the play. Going to bring up second and nine. 2.45 left here in the second quarter. Beautiful night for high school football. Still amazed at the uh, hit that Wood put on quarterback Kerry Miller. He jarred the ball loose. A lot of movement for the Commodores there, and that's going to the whole right side of the line jumped along with uh, Jamie Phillips in the backfield. Five penalties tonight for Lafayette here in the first half for 30 yards. So, so that's going to bring up second and 14. The ball is going to be back at the 17-yard line. 2.25 to go here in the first half. Here's Woodall under center, takes the snap, hands off to Fondren. Fondren finds a hole along the right side across the 15 up to about the 18-yard line. Going to pick up about four. Bring up third and 12 as he only picked up two yards. One fifty to go here in the first half. Woodall goes under center. Wallington long back in the backfield. Phillips goes in motion, and he's going to set up as a blocking back. There's the handoff to Wallington. Big hole. He's got some room around the left side. Crosses the 35-yard line. He's going to be right out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. 16-yard pickup that time for the Commodores and number seven, Ricky Wadlington. Nice pickup, Denny. Big first down. Most importantly, got out of bounds and stopped that clock. 125 left here in the second quarter. Lafayette still has one timeout left. Louisville with two. Watlington has picked up a lot of yards here tonight. Now Fondren is in the backfield. Dropping back, here comes the rush. He's hit Fondren out of the backfield. Nice pick up across to the 40 yard line, and he's going to be dropped right there as they pick up about three on the little dump pass, Denny, and that's what they did. They let everybody come, and he just kind of lobbed it over the head. Good pass this time by Justin Woodall has brought the defenders to him, and he just dumped it over them. Four yard pick up that time for Lafayette. It's going to bring up second and six. We're right at a minute left here in the second quarter. Woodall has completed two passes, both to Fondren, 20 yards. 44 seconds to go here in the first half, and the Commodores look intent to kind of let the clock run. Going to be a delay of game. 
Now, Commodore's going to take a timeout because there was two seconds on the clock when he blew it because I looked, it was getting very close. And with 37 seconds to go, the LaFayette Commodore is leading the Louisville Wildcats 14 to nothing. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching LaFayette Commodore football on Lawson Channel 97. Cheney's Pharmacy is more than just a pharmacy. This family-owned drugstore features a soda fountain with TCBY yogurt, a day spa and salon service, extensive cosmetic and cologne collections, fine candies, greeting cards, unique gifts, and children's toys. Our pharmacy is staffed by professional, courteous pharmacists and pharmacy technicians. They also offer a two-car drive through window. Drive around back and let them assist you from the convenience of your car. Cheney's Pharmacy looks forward to serving you during your time in Oxford. That's Cheney's Pharmacy. What's inside might surprise you. Vault Hemingway Stadium. Right before the half, the Commodores leading 14 to nothing. 37 seconds to go in the first half. We'll see second and six. The ball's at the 41-yard line. We'll see what the Commodores, if they're going to try to do anything or just run the clock out. Looks like they're going to try to do something. They've got four receivers stacked right side. One receiver all the way over here by himself on the left, right next to the down marker. There's the snap. Woodall's in his shotgun. He's got plenty of time. He's going to roll with it, keep it himself. He fakes. He puts the ball on the ground, and it's going to be picked up. It looks like by the Wildcats, and it is going to be a turnover as Justin Woodall was carrying the ball one-handed and let it slip out of his hand and turn up to the Commodore. 27 seconds to go, Denny. We talked about it earlier. earlier. Woodall's got to do a better job when he takes off running with that football. He's got to protect the ball because that's what Lewis was taught to do. Try to knock that ball loose, and that's exactly what they did that time. He picked up seven yards before he fumbled. So now it's first and ten. Ball's at the 48 for the Wildcats. Stan Frazier. In the backfield is Kerry Miller. Stands in shotgun formation. Three receivers right, one left. There's a snap. And it looks like Frazier may have missed it. Miller's going to keep it himself. He gets to the 45-yard line. He's going to pick up about seven yards. And Lewisville is going to call a timeout. We'll keep it here with about 14 seconds to go. The clock continues to run. So... I believe there's miscommunication maybe, Denny, as Frazier went one way and Miller turned the other and then had to run with it. I believe you're right that time, Ronnie, as Lewis will take the timeout. Three-yard pickup for the quarterback, Miller. Going to bring up second and seven with should be 14 seconds to go. I have to wait and see if they put some more time on the clock. I know a little earlier when the clock had ran, when they called a timeout, they did not put it back on there. But I don't know what kind of communication they have at this field with the clock keeper being so far up, Ronnie. See on the left of the screen there is Bill Cock is talking to Coach Hart and explaining the situation to him to let him know that. There's a few more seconds than actually say on the clock. Probably about 14 seconds to go. What it should be. So here's Miller. Under center, Frazier lone back in the backfield. Three receivers right, one left. There's a snap, one step drop. He's going to hit his receiver. Going to turn and he's going to fire the ball downfield. Woodall goes up, deflects the pass. A little trickery there, Denny, from Louisville, Louisville but it didn't work as uh, Justin Woodall was back there. Woodall, Woodall went up, tried to come up with the interception as he knocked the ball away from the Louisville defender, excuse me, Louisville receiver. Good play that time by number one, Justin Woodall. Trying to redeem himself after the fumble on the last series. Almost came up with it. It's going to bring up third and seven. Ball at the 45-yard line. Same setup here. Fumbles the ball coming out. The Commodores 
fall on it, but couldn't grab it. Pick it up, and they're going to return it, but they're blowing the ball dead. And Coach Hart is not liking that. As you can see, he is very animated across the way, saying that that was a fumble. And the crowd does not like it. That's going to be it, Denny, as the Fayette Commodores are going to go into the half. We're going to kind of keep it here just to see. As you see Coach Hart, he's one an explanation. He said the ball was not down. And the referee said it was. They pat each other on the back. And that's going to do it. So we'll be back. The Lafayette Commodores 14, the Louisville Cardinals 0 here at the half. We're back with Lafayette County football on Lowson. Where is the one place you can find the finest and most unique t-shirt prints in Oxford? That's Cat Daddy's, of course. Cat Daddy's, downtown Oxford, has designs that no one else can touch. That's because their exclusive designs are printed in-house. Cat Daddy's has over 75 designs of long sleeve and short sleeve t-shirts, and they also have a wide array of Ole Miss and Oxford apparel. From sweatshirts and caps to cutter and buck golf shirts, you'll find everything you need to show the world who you are. They also have attire for little ones, too. Cat Daddy's is the official Rod Squad source. Cat Daddy's, just off the Oxford Square, across from Proud Larry's. And welcome back to Vault Hemingway Stadium as the Lafayette Commodores and the Louisville Wildcats are playing here at the Vault and it's 14 to nothing at the half. The Commodores lead. A few halftime stats for you. Justin Woodall, the quarterback of the Commodores, two of five passing for 20 yards with one interception. His two completions to Josh Fondren, the receiver, for 20 yards. Justin Woodall also five carries, 33 yards. Ricky Wildington, five carries, 43 yards, and a touchdown. Josh Fondren, four carries, eight yards. For Louisville Wildcats, Kerry Miller, the quarterback, is 0 for 3 with an interception. And no receivers have caught passes. Frazier, seven carries, 20 yards. Eichelberger, one carry for minus four yards. Justin Moore, two carries, minus two yards. Chris Welch, two carries, six yards. And Deion Kickman, one carry, four yards. So total yards the first half. Lafayette Commodores have 104. The Louisville Wildcats, 24. So the Commodore defense is really playing pretty tough for a 14 to nothing lead here. And we're about ready for the second half kickoff. We're going to get out of here and take a break. We'll be back right after this with Lafayette Commodore football on Lowson. At Merchants and Farmers Bank in Oxford, their customers are number one. Personal and business checking accounts are available. Savings account, IRAs, Christmas Club, and Kids Club accounts, as well as CDs. One of their friendly representatives will help you select the best option for your needs. Internet banking service is available for those on the go. Serving you in three locations, that's Merchants and Farmers Bank in Oxford. And welcome back to Bald Hemingway Stadium, home of the Ole Miss Rebels, as the Lafayette Commodores are hosting the Louisville Wildcats here in Friday night football action. Commodore was looking for their third win of the year. And Denny, the uh, Commodore defense has been stingy. They've gone now 10 quarters without giving up a score at all. Well, they've played really good all season long, Ronnie, and they want to continue to do that this second half of the ball game as their offense has done a nice job tonight. And they do have a defensive touchdown after the um, fumble up by the um, player of Lewisville. The Commodore's defender picked it up. I believe that was... Um, Wildington, Wildington picked, picked the ball and returned, yeah, returned it for a touchdown. 28-yard touchdown. Fumble recovery return, and the Commodores are up 14 to nothing, and they won the opening toss and deferred to the second half, so they'll get the ball. Desmond Ivey and Marcus, or Dacus Miller. Back deep to receive for the doors. Frazier is going to do the kicking here for the Wildcats. And ball's set up on the tee. He's kind of on the side, as you see there, Ronnie. And kind of a, those odd kicks, trying to get some kind of bounce or something. There it is. And it's going to be caught by the Commodores at the 36-37 yard line. Number 36 there for the Commodores. 
on the recovery, and the Commodores will take it over. That was Buddy Toes on the recovery, and the Commodores will take it over first and 10 at their own 37. They wants their offense to come out here, start the second half, and really make some things happen, try to move the ball, run some of this clock, and try to put some more points on the board as they lead 14 to nothing here at the start of the second half. Lewis was still looking for their first win of the season. Woodall's going to come out as the quarterback. One man in the backfield. That's Fondren. Here's the handoff. He has a big hole up across midfield. Going to be brought down at the 48-yard line of the Wildcats. About a 15-yard pickup that time for Lafayette. Good run by Fondren. Ball at the Louisville 48 yard line. First and 10 for Fed. So nice pick up there by Fondren. One play, one first down. That's what Coach Hart wants his team to come out and do as they start the second half. 15 yard pick up that time for Fondren. First and 10. There's Woodall, the handoff. And it's going to get to the 40. About the 46 this time is Fondren once again. Be about a two-yard pickup is going to bring up second and about eight, maybe seven. Might have given him three on the carry. Ball at the 45-yard line. So Fondren taking the ball the first two plays from Woodall. 15 yards the first one and three yards that second time. As Fondren checks out of the ball game. Ricky Wallington, another back is in, and that's what these guys do. They keep throwing different players at you. There's the handoff to Wallington, another big hoe, and he's going to be down inside the 40, still on his feet, twisting. Going to be brought down at the 30-yard line, 15-yard pickup for Ricky Wallington. Well, Ron, as you said, it, they've been switching in and out all night with Fondren and Wallington, and that's how they scored that opening drive. It was just that one-two punch. It looks like we're going to see that here on this opening drive of the second half. So Ivy and Young are going to come wide right. Miller and Hutchins wide left. Wadlington lone back in the backfield behind Woodall. Snap the handoff to Wadlington. He's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage, and he falls forward to back to the 30-yard line. So no gain on the block. Got back to about the original line of scrimmage, did Wadlington. Kind of a dangerous play, Ryan, as he held the ball out there trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Fondren checks back into the ball game for the Commodores. Wildington checks out. So not something you really want to see is stretching that ball out there like that. Yeah, you take a look at way across the field. Andre Hutchins is all the way on the side. There's the pitch out to Finder. Cuts back inside. Still on his feet. He's down to the 20, the 15, the 10. And he's going to be drugged down about the 11 or 12 yard line. And it's one guy or another. And they're just going to keep running at you. 19 yard pickup that time by Fondren. Nice job of cutting back inside when there was nothing outside. Three carries this drive for 37 yards is what Fondren has, and he's been all over the field doing a good job of running the football tonight. The Commodores first and 10 at the 12. Fondren and Miller check out. Phillips and Wadlington check in. Hutchins goes all the way to the far side of the field, right on the sideline. Desmond Ivey and Adam Young. Commodores are going to call a timeout. Zach Young, I'm sorry. 9-17 to go in the third quarter. Still, same score, Commodores 14, Wildcats 0. We're back right after this with Commodore football. Gilliland Orthodontists appreciate the quality of a great smile and offer three locations to help serve you better. Visit them in Oxford, Tupelo, and their new branch office in South Haven. Dr. Bishop, Dr. Gilliland, and their staff have over 100 years combined experience. They're offering complimentary consultations to all fans. They specialize in both children and adult braces and are Invisalign certified. Call today to schedule an appointment. Dr. Bishop, Dr. Gilliland, and staff wish the best to all our area teams. Go On this job, you notice things, like this new steak fanatic pizza. 
It's a big hit with the guys. Steak fanatic pizza. Mm hmm. Man fuel. Cool. Hey, hey, hurry up. Only 23 figurines left. Hey. They're statues. There's statues. Introducing Domino's new Steak Fanatic Pizza. Angus steak piled on even more steak smothered in cheese. Buy a medium for just $9.99 and heap on even more Angus steak for just two bucks. Hit the door. It's Domino's new Steak Fanatic Pizza. Inside the 10 yard line, and he's going to be dropped at the 10, about a two yard pickup for Ricky Wadlington as uh, he tried to cut it back inside, and there just wasn't a whole lot there for the Commodores. So second and eight at the 10 yard line. Commodores threatening, leading 14 to nothing with 8.53 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, they pretty much kept the ball on the ground most of the night. He's trying to run it up the middle on Lewis. Phillips in motion, the big guy. There's a snap. Pitches to Fondren. He's going to get to the 10, and once again, no game. Good job that time of Lewisville's defense. They stepped up and stacked a bunch of men in there inside the box. Not letting Lafayette do much of anything that time as far as running the football. So a drive that started back on their own 37. They're to the 10-yard line now. As Woodall goes under center. Three receivers right. There's the snap. And Woodall is going to fall straight ahead. Woodall Looks like he may have kind of bobbled the ball a little bit coming out from under center, Denny. And so the Commodores are going to have to settle for a field goal. Taylor Maddox on for the field goal attempt. Ball will be spotted at the seven-yard line, so a 24-yard field goal attempt for the Commodores and Taylor Maddox. I'll tell you what, Ronnie, I don't want to jinx the kid, but he's been a heck of a kicker all year long. Yeah, we saw him miss a uh, long 40-something yard kick last week. This one's going to be right down the middle. And we saw him miss it, but it was wide left and uh, had plenty of foot on it. So you know he can kick. And the Commodores now go up 17 to nothing with 7.26 to go here in the third quarter. A Taylor Maddox field goal. And Denny, the defense of uh, Lafayette is ready to come back out and start this second half the same way they ended the first. Well, they're really playing well tonight. Let's talk about Taylor Maddox. We talked to Coach Hart earlier in the week, and he mentioned that on that 42-yard field goal attempt that he thought that the snap and the hole weren't all that good. But Taylor Maddox, as you said, Ronnie, had plenty of room to kick the ball, actually had plenty of distance, just missed it a little bit. So that's something that most teams are always looking for is a, a good kicker. And Lafayette's got him a fine kicker in Taylor Maddox. So third kick of the night, third kickoff of the night for the Commodores, and we'll see if they try to do the same thing with the little pooch kick over. Fourth kickoff, I'm sorry, but now uh, the Wildcats have moved uh, a couple of players up. They they put a different player at the 30. They don't have Thomas over there anymore. So this one's going to go a little deeper, calling for a fair catch. That's the quarterback, I believe. No, yep, that's the quarterback back at the 25-yard line calls for the fair catch. I'll tell you what, that's some good coaching right there for Lafayette. Is they didn't like what they saw with the when they scouted Louisville, and they're doing a good job by just placing that ball. Taylor Maddox doing a nice job. Kicking that ball to the outside and not letting Lewis will do much of anything as far as returning the ball. Well, we saw uh, or we heard that uh, Coach Hart told us that uh, they only gave up 10 yards of total offense the whole second half to Tupelo last week. So they've got a pretty good defense themselves. And here's the snap, the handoff to Frazier. Frazier bounces across the 30-yard line up to about the 32. He's going to pick up about seven on the carry. Frazier, a fast guy coming out of the backfield. Looks like he was shot out of a cannon that time, but he ran into the Lafayette defense. Did a good job. Picked up about seven yards on the play. Going to bring up second and about three for the Commodores. Excuse me, for the Wildcats. Frazier pretty much been their workhorse most of the night. Gonna pitch to him this time out of the backfield. Nowhere to run. He tries to cut back inside. He's gonna be hit back at the 30 and gonna lose about two yards on that kick. Frazier on the carry. Nice job that time by the front line of the defense for the Commodores. As Frazier took the ball and they had lost about two, as you said, Ronnie. 
going to bring up third and about five for the Wildcats. Big third down play here for the Lafayette defense. Balls at the 30. Miller look, looks, going to change the play. No time on the clock. The play clock expired, and so that's going to back them up now to third and ten. So they're going to lose five yards on the delay. Delay of game on the offense. That's the second penalty of the game for Louisville. Actually, the third. They have three penalties for 20 yards. Lafayette had five penalties there in the first half for 30 yards. Third and ten ball back at the 25-yard line. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. Miller takes it, trying to stretch it out. He's going to be hit and dropped right at the 25-yard line by Ricky Wadlington of the Commodores, and that's going to bring up a fourth down, so no gain on the carry for the quarterback. He played big number 47. Marquino Lee was being held that time by Chris Welch. As Marquino Lee was chasing the quarterback of Louisville to the outside, and it's going to bring up fourth and ten, and Louisville will be, will be forced to punt. Returning for the Commodores is number one, Justin Woodall, and number two, Desmond Ivey. Now, have you done a good job so far this season on punt returns for the Commodores? There's the snap, the punt. It's going to hit at the 46. Going to roll backwards and roll out of bounds at about the 41. So they did a good job of keeping it away from either of the Lafayette backs. 33-yard punt that time by Louisville as the Commodores will come out. Their second drive of the second half, and we'll have the ball first and 10 at their own 42-yard line. 5-10 left here in the third quarter. Lafayette leads 17 to nothing over Louisville. Just a couple of these guys across the front for the Commodores, Daniel Edwards, Jake Mills. Going to get a timeout. We'll take it with them. 5-10 to go in the third quarter. Lafayette 17, Louisville 0. We're back with Commodore football right after this. World, home of the better buys on better brands. Names like Serta, Roy Hill, Clayton Marcus, Bassett, Action Lane, Hickory Hill, and Ashley. Serving Oxford and the surrounding area for over 30 years, Furniture World has free delivery within 60 miles and no interest financing with approved credit. Come see Betsy Alloway for all your home furnishing needs at Furniture World. Ja the professional way to promote your business, turn to One Day Signs. One Day Signs has the state-of-the-art computer technology and skilled manpower to create and install your new sign, banner, vehicle lettering, window lettering, magnetics, logos and graphics, aluminum and wood signs, plastic and plexiglass. They also can custom create your game day banners and party posters from your favorite picture. One Day Signs proudly serves the Oxford and Batesville areas. Get it done right. Get it done quick. Get it done at One Day Signs. And we're back at Bald Hemingway Stadium. The Commodores, first and 10 at their own 42-yard line. Woodall drops back. No one to throw to. He's going to keep it. He's got some room to run across midfield. Cuts a runner. He's up to the 40, still on his feet, still on his feet, and he's going to get run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So about an 18-yard pickup for Justin Woodall, Denny, as he dropped back, nobody to throw to, and he just tucked it. I'm going to tell you what, that was a heck of a block downfield at about midfield by number 86. The tight end, J.J. Buford for the Commodores, really just laid the wood to one of the defenders of Louisville. But an excellent run that time by Justin Woodall as he picks up 18 yards and another first down for the Commodores. And then he was carrying the ball a lot closer to his body that time. He stood out there with one hand. Ricky Watlington, the lone back in the backfield for the doors. And it looks like we're going to get a timeout from the Commodores. 
We'll take one with them. So 4.56 to go in the third quarter. Commodore 17, Wildcats 0. We're back with more Commodore football on Lawson right after this. You get a lot of products thrown your way. Here's the delivery. One is clearly the best. He connects. Digital cable with hundreds of channels, 24-hour sports coverage, exclusive technology like video on demand. Satellite doesn't have it. And the internet speeds to match even the most diehard fantasy owner. This season, come home to cable. And that's the ball game. We're back at Bald Hemingway Stadium, the home of the Lafayette Commodores this year as their field is under renovation. Commodores have the ball first and 10 at the Wildcat 40-yard line with 4.56 to go here in the third quarter. Ronnie Williams, Denny Tosh, Stephen Beebe coming to you from Bald Hemingway Stadium, Hollinsworth Field. What all goes under center, Wallington alone back. Hands off to Wallington, nowhere to go. And Ricky is going to be driven backwards by Mark Hoskins, senior defensive lineman, and going to lose a couple of yards on this one. Big stop that time by the big defense of Louisville. Wellington had nowhere to go as he took the ball from Woodall. Tried to take it up the middle, but he was met by some defenders for Louisville. So second and 12, Woodall is going to go in shotgun this time with Josh Fondren on his right shoulder. The left-handed gunslinger is Woodall. He's dropping back. Here comes a rush. He's going to be hit, and he's going to be dropped in the backfield, and he gets rid of the ball. Here comes a very, very late flag, and that's going to be intentional grounding, loss of down. Back at the 37-yard line, Denny. Not what you want if you're a Commodore fan, but a nice job on defense that time by Louisville applying the pressure to Woodall. He had nowhere to go, Roddy. Well, they're going to mark that ball all the way back to the 32-yard line. 26-yard loss on the play. So it should be third down and 38. Woodall's just going to hand it off to, to uh, Wildington. Wildington's going to cross the 40 up to the 45-yard line. So they're going to get a little bit of it back right there, but still going to bring up fourth and about 25. 13-yard gain that time for Wildington. Kind of caught Lewisville's defense off guard as they were not expecting a run that time. Going to bring up fourth down. And about 25, Maddox out to punt for the Commodores. Ball spotted at the 45-yard line of Lafayette. Snap. Nice kick this time. Runs up. He's going to fumble. He's going to drop the ball, and it's on about the 28-yard line, and I believe he fell right on top of it. I couldn't tell who it was back there, did he? 30-yard punt that time for Maddox as it was fielded at about the 25. Number three. For Louisville, that's Daniel Eichelberger. Fielded the ball at about the 25. Coughed it up. Did recover. Louisville will take over first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. 3.28 left here in the third quarter. Lafayette leads 17 to nothing over Louisville. And a great night for high school football. Kerry Miller, the quarterback, goes in under center. I formation in the backfield behind him. Hands off to the first back through. That's the fullback, Chris Welch. And Welch is going to get it out to about the 30-yard line. Picked up about a yard, maybe two on the play. He's going to bring up second and a long eight for Louisville. But I tell you what, Ryan Lafayette's defense has played a great ball game tonight, as they have all year. Three minutes left here in the third quarter, and they still have Yet to let anyone score on this season. Only gave up 24 yards of total offense in the first half. So we have a flag on the play. Fire and tap offside on the offense. The offsides 
against the Wildcats. Going to back it up five and second and 13. Ball spotted back at the 25-yard line. Second and 13. So now it's down to 21 yards of total offense in the game for Lewisville. And this defense is something else for the Commodore. Handoff to Frazier. He gets to the 27-yard line, 28-yard line, and that's going to be all he's going to pick up about three. A little surprise, Lewisville trailing 17 and up and still continue to try to run the ball up the, up the middle against this Lafayette defense. Have not been successful so far tonight. Is that big defensive line of Lafayette doing a nice job, as are the linebackers for the Commodores. So now Lewis was going to send three receivers wide left. Tight end right. Frazier lone back in the backfield. Miller's under center. Takes a snap. He's going to fire it out. He hits uh, his first man there, number three. That's Eichelberger. And he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage at about the 27. So they're going to lose a yard on the completed pass. Well, a nice job that time by Andre Hutchins of wrapping the receiver up. And Buddy Tolles, number 36 for the Commodores, coming in there and finishing him off. Ball at the 28-yard line. He's going to bring up fourth and about 11. Lewis will be forced to punt. Woodall and Desmond Ivey back at about their own 40-yard line to return for the Commodores. Well, here's the snap. Gets the kick. A low line drive is going to bounce at the 50. Woodall jumps up, takes it at the 44. Kind of dancing around. Going to get caught back there and going to be tackled. Nice tackle by number 44, Charles Rags. As Woodall could not get away from him. We're all trying to put the little dance move. Rags was not buying it, Ronnie, as he stayed with him and made a good job of making the tackle for Lewisville. So it's going to bring up first and 10. The ball is going to be placed at the 42-yard line of the Commodores. One oh five left here in the third quarter. Lafayette leads 17 to nothing. Fonder and Lone back in the backfield. Hands off to Finder, cuts it up in the middle, and it's just a glob of white and red shirts in there, and he has nowhere to go as he gets back. Actually, they're going to say 41, so he's going to lose a yard. Going to bring up second 11 for the Commodores. Woodall back drying his hands off with the towels. Thought he was back there talking to the official about maybe that last play where he got called for the intentional grounding, but clearly was a penalty. Should be the, if the Commodores run the ball, should be the final play of the third quarter. Woodall is back in shotgun with Ricky Wadlington on his right shoulder. Waiting on snap, there it is. Play clock had expired, so we're going to back up the Commodores five for a delay of game. And going up second and 16. It's probably going to be really the only complaint tonight coming from Coach Hart is not something he wants to see as far as penalties. That's actually the seventh penalty tonight for the Commodores. Something you've got to eliminate as you get farther into this region against some good teams. So second and 16, and a couple of Wildcats jump. See if they're drawn off. They're all pointing at each other. Going to call it against the Commodore. So delay and now false start. Denny's going to keep backing them up. Ball spotted back from 31 yards. Second and 21 now for the Commodore. Eight, eight penalties tonight for 60 yards. Take away the opening drive of the second half. The Commodores have gone backwards on their last two possessions. High formation behind Woodall. Hands off to Wallington. wallington has got a hole. Cuts it, and he tries to cut, and he's going to fall down at the 40, and his knee kind of buckled, and he is down. Denny holding on to that knee right at the 40-yard line. Well, you hate to see that because he was not tackled on the play, Ronnie, as he fell down. 
When he tried to make that cut back up the field, good to see him getting up as the trainer for LaFay advance Holland on the field, checking on Wobbington. That was a real scary looking play, Denny, as he kind of tried to cut and it looked like his knee just buckled. So you don't know if it was the turf here, which plays more like grass than it does turf, but that's going to be it for the third quarter. And good to see Ricky running off on his own. So the end of the third quarter, the Commodores still leading 17 to nothing. We've got one quarter left. We'll be back right after this with Commodore football on Lawson. The Square has served the Oxford University community for 39 years. The largest screen printer and monogrammer in the area. University Sporting Goods has full-time graphic artists on staff to help you with your ideas. A team dealer with lines from Nike to Under Armour and Adidas to Zephyr. Look at University Sporting Goods for jerseys and bats, balls, or hats. Come by and visit our newly renovated space and see a wide selection of Ole Miss t-shirts and gifts. Others come and go, but for quality service and great value, come by University Sporting Goods on the Oxford Square. Absolutely no dogs allowed. And welcome back to Bald Hemingway Stadium. We've got 12 minutes to go. The Commodores leading 17 to zip over the Wildcats. And uh, Denny, it's, it's been a very good game for the Commodores defensively as they have just pretty much kept Louisville at bay all night. Louisville only has 24 yards of total offense. Well, right, I'll tell you what, if a face defense continues to do this all season long, they won't lose too many ball games because they've been perfect at after what, 11 quarters of play? Have yet to give up a field goal. Third and 11, the ball's at the 41. Quick hitter out to Miller. Miller's got some room to run across the 50 and run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Big first down for the Commodores as Woodall hit Dacus Miller for a big reception. Name you have not heard tonight, Dacus Miller, someone who we've mentioned all season long, a good job that time of picking up a big first down for the Commodores. Well, first and 10 now as the ball gets the 41 yard line. 18 yard pickup on the pass. There's the handoff to Fondren. Fondren trying to get outside and could not do it as a couple of hands on the jersey picks up a couple of yards. That's going to be it, Denny. Going to bring up second and about eight for the Commodores. Woodall's first completion of the second half. Second and eight. Second and eight. Ball at the 39. 11-20 to go in the ball game. Quick hitter once again. Same play. Got it set up this time to Miller. Miller's going to be down to the 30. Crosses the 30, the 29-yard line. 10-yard play, first down for the Commodores. 10-yard pick of that time, as you said, Ryan, the same play. The pass from Justin Woodall to number 22, Dacus Miller. Picks up another first down, and this is the, what Coach Hart wanted to see in his Commodores on this drive, doing a nice job move, moving the football. The first and 10 for the Commodores. Ball on the 29. High formation in the backfield behind Woodall. And Louisville's going to call a timeout. We'll take it with them. 10.55 to go in the ball game. Commodores leading 17 to nothing. We're back right after this on Lawson. University Avenue in Oxford has all of your fall planting needs. Beautiful garden mums in many sizes and colors. Trees of all kinds. Shade trees, ornamental trees, and fruit and nut trees. Shrubs and ground covers of all kinds. And don't forget the Fertilome Winterizer, with or without weed control. While visiting the garden center, be sure to see our exciting new lines of giftware and interior decor. We're open every day at the garden center in Oxford. 
National Bank of Oxford, you'll find friendly professional service from the bank that's served Lafayette County for over 94 years. As our community's grown, we've expanded with more locations in Oxford than anyone else. The University Branch in West Jackson, the North Lamar Office, the newly renovated Medical Center Office at Highway 6 in South Lamar offers drive-through and lobby service and a convenient drive-up ATM. And our main office on the square, where we've held a presence since 1910. When you're ready for a bank as deeply committed to Lafayette County as you are, you're ready for First National Bank of Oxford. And welcome back to Bald Hemingway Stadium. 10.55 to go in the ball game. The Commodores leading 17 to nothing. And first and 10 at the Wildcat 29, threatening to score again. Jamie Phillips in at fullback. Josh Fondren at the tailback. Justin Woodall in at quarterback. But Fondren is going to be hit and spins forward. He's going to fall at about the 28-yard line. Going to pick up about a yard, and that's going to be about it. Second and nine for the Commodores. Blown back in the backfield this time is Fonder. Woodall's just going to take it and go forward and see what he can pick up. He's going to get pushing way down to about the 26, Denny, and he's going to be brought down there. No QB draw that time by Woodall. Going to bring up about third and seven. Looks like he got more yards than he did, Ronnie. They're going to give him about two yards on the play. Going to bring up third and seven, as you said, for the Commodores. Big third down play as Lafayette wanted to put some points on here to extend that lead. Got Phillips and Fondren in the backfield. Going to hand off to Fondren, following Phillips, and he's got the first down and a lot more. He's going to be down inside the 15-yard line, brought down at about the 13, Denny. About a 13-yard pickup there for Josh Fondren. Fondren really doing a good job tonight, Ronnie, of running the football. He's been the workhorse for this Lafayette Commodore team. As he picks up a big first down for the Commodores. Lafayette will have the ball first and 10 at the Lewisville 14-yard line. 13-yard line, first and 10. There's a snap, the handoff to Wellington. Good to see him back in there. He kind of falls forward for maybe a yard to the 12. Going to bring up second and about nine for Lafayette. 9.04 left here in the fourth quarter. Lafayette leads 17 to zero. Over Louisville. We talk about this Louisville team, Ronnie. They one of those schools you hear about, they've, they've had really good teams in the past, but as of late, these last couple of years, they haven't been the same Louisville team that most people remember there in the um, early and late 90s. Used to be one of those deals to where to get to the North Half State Championship, the road went through Louisville. And, um, of course, last year, their first losing season in 40 years, Denny. Finished 2-8. and eight. Their only wins were against Bailey and Neshoba Central. Woodall takes a snap. He's going to fake it. He's got some room to run. He's going to bring it around the left side. Cuts back inside. They're going to get a hold on Montrell McEwen at the five-yard line as Woodall stretched it down to about the four, close to a first down. Well, there's no question about that call right there. That was definitely holding by number 12, Montrell McEwen. He's tried to defend the defensive back off of Woodall, but he clearly held his jersey. And that will come back 10 yards from about the five-yard line. Fade will have the ball second and 12 at the Louisville 16-yard line. Eight seventeen to go. Cannonball formation, Ronnie. Well, he got it kind of stacked up on the right side. There's the handoff to Wellington. Big hole. He busts it down inside the 10 to the 6-yard line as Ricky Wellington is going to pick up 9 yards on the carry. Good to see Wellington back in the ball game, Ronnie, as we saw him limp out there a couple plays ago. 
Good to see him back in the game and running the ball well for Lafayette. Third and three. I'll bring up third and three. Half to six. Fondren this time around the right side. Cuts it inside. He is going to be close. He is in the end zone. Touchdown, Josh Fondren. Lead blocked there by Jamie Phillips. And Denny, the Commodores now up 23 to nothing with 7.32 to go. Excellent run that time by Fondren. Ronnie, as we said earlier, you got to take your hats off to Ricky Wellington and Josh Fondren tonight. They've really done a good job of running the football for Lafayette, and they've both been the workhorses here for this Commodore football team. So here is Maddox to tack on the extra point. There's a snap to put down by Hunter Mize. The kick is up, and it is good. And the Commodores go up 24 to nothing with 7.32 to go here in the ball game. We'll be back right after this. The Commodores lead here on Losen. Cheney's Pharmacy is more than just a pharmacy. This family-owned drugstore features a soda fountain with TCBY yogurt, a day spa and salon service, extensive cosmetic and cologne collections, fine candies, greeting cards, unique gifts, and children's toys. Our pharmacy is staffed by professional, courteous pharmacists and pharmacy technicians. They also side might surprise you. And we're back at Bald Hemingway Stadium as the LaFayette Commodores have added another score and have gone up 24 nothing. Over the Lewisville Wildcats. And Denny uh, has only got seven and a half minutes to go in the ball game, and the Commodores are pretty much out in front here now, and they don't want to have a letdown. They still want to keep playing the same style of defense they've been playing, but, man, that defense has really come to play here tonight. They really have. They've been this way all year long, Ronnie. Take your hats off to Eric Robertson and his entire defensive staff because they've done an excellent job. They've had really good game plans, not, against, not only against – Holly Springs and Shaw, but also against his Louisville Wildcat team. Once again, here's the little kick, and it's going to be taken at the 24-yard line, taken back across the far side of the field. Cuts back inside, still on his feet. He's going to be brought down right there. That's number 14, Deron Haynes, with the return. A good tackle that time for number 35, Terrell Gordon, came pretty much out of nowhere out of the backfield to come up with a big stop for the Commodores. Can't say enough about the way Taylor Maddox has not only kicked extra points in the field goal tonight, but also in his coughs, as he's done everything his coaches have asked of him. Well, Louisville's going to take over first and 10 at their own 42-yard line, trying to get something going as this Commodore defense has been real stingy here tonight. Trips right. There's the snap. The throw out to Michael Berger, and he is going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to be about all. Good As job by number three, Andre Hutchins, the defensive back, stayed home and made a nice play on defense for the Commodores. Going to bring up seven and nine for Louisville. Yeah. I was going to be spotted at the 43. So not much on that little play. We've seen a couple of times here tonight. There's a snap. He's dropping back. He fires to Eichelberger again. Phillips missed him, and he's got some room to run across midfield, lowers his head, and Cal keeps on banging. He's going to be down at the 41-yard line. A nice pickup that time. He's had a chance to get him. And the Wildcats are driving into Commodore territory. We're back right after this on Lawson Channel 97. Here's the one place you can find the finest, most unique T-shirt prints in Oxford. That's Cat Daddy's, of course. Cat Daddy's Downtown Oxford has designs that no one else can touch. That's because their exclusive designs are printed in-house. Cat Daddy has over 75 designs with long sleeve and short sleeve t-shirts and a wide array of Ole Miss and Oxford apparel. From sweatshirt and caps to cover and buck golf shirts, you'll find everything you need to show the world who you are. They also have attire for little ones, too. Cat Daddy's is the official Rod Squad source. Cat Daddy's, just off the Oxford Square, across from Proud Larry. 6.05 to go. Ball game, Commodores 24, Wildcats 0. Wildcats at the Commodore 47 9. As Terry Miller, the quarterback of the Wildcats, goes in under seven. The high formation was great. 
Hands off to Welch. Welch spins around to the 40, 39 yard line, and that's going to. You got Adam Young, number six. Welch is going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be about it. And they're going to say fumble. Big number 55 comes away with it for the Commodores as Welch gave it up. Chris Gibson on the recovery, Denny, and once again, while we've been talking about that, Commodore defense holds and comes away with a fumble. I'll tell you what, you've got to take your hats off to this defense. They've played well all night. We can't talk enough about them. With 5.06 left here in the fourth quarter, trying to go ahead and that's it's the Commodore defense. Woodall still in at quarterback. Phillips and Fondren in the backfield. Eye formation. Hand off to Fondren. Fondren cuts back inside up across the 40, 42-yard line, and that's going to be it, but he's going to pick up two to keep the clock moving. Fondren pleading his case there. He hit pretty hard as he was trying to get up by one of the defenders from Louisville. Asking the official there if he saw it. And the going to bring up second for the Commodores. Commodores trying to run the clock out. 4.35 to go here in the ball game. Wallington checks in for Fondren behind Phillips. High formation. Hand off to Wallington. Big hole around the left side. He's spinning, spinning. He's on his feet across midfield. And he's going to be down at the 47-yard line for another Commodore first down. 11-yard pick up that time for Wallington. Doing a, can't say enough about this kid tonight, Rod. Both Wallington and Fine doing a good job of running the football for this Commodore team. That's why Lafayette is so dangerous. They have so many weapons, not only in Justin Woodall, but they've got three or four guys that can run the ball. They have three or four receivers that can catch and make some big plays. So look for this Lafayette football team. Make some good things happen here in the season. So now they're going to bring Fondren back in. Let him run one time. He's trying to get stressed to the outside. No go. He's going to fall back at the 49. He's going to lose two yards as Fondren. But more importantly, that clock continues to roll. 47 left here in the fourth quarter. 24 to nothing. Lafayette leads over Louisville. Second and 12. Ball at the 49. Beautiful night here at Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford. To keep the clock moving. Fondren pleading his case there. He was hit pretty hard as he was trying to get by one of the defenders from Louisville. Asking the official there if he saw it. And the going to bring up second. For the Commodores. We're trying to run the clock out. 4.35 to go here in the ball game. Wallington checks in for Fondren behind Phillips. High formation. Hand off to Wallington. Big hole around the left side. Keeps spinning, spinning. He's on his feet across midfield. And he's going to be down at the 47-yard line for another Commodore first down. 11-yard pick at that time for Wallington. Doing a, can't say enough about this kid tonight, Rod. Both Wallington and Fodger doing a good job of running the football for this Commodore team. That's why Lafayette is so dangerous. They have so many weapons, not only in Justin Woodall, but they've got three or four guys that can run the ball. They have three or four receivers that can catch and make some big plays. So look for this Lafayette football team. Make some good things happen here in the season. So now they're going to bring Fondren back in. Let him run one time. He's trying to get stretched to the outside. No, no, he's going to fall back at the 49. He's going to lose two yards as Fondren. But more importantly, that clock continues to roll. 347 left here in the fourth quarter. 24 to nothing. Lafayette leads over Louisville. Second and 12. Ball at the 49. Beautiful night here at Bond Hemingway Stadium in Oxford. Commodores, 24, Louisville 0. Justin Woodall watching the play clock. It's down to 3. 
hands off to Wadlington this time. Wadlington cuts back inside. Still on his feet across the 40. He's got one man to beat, but he's going to step out of bounds back at the 12-yard line. And Denny, the one-two punch of Wadlington and Byron is just too much for the Wildcat. 39-yard run that time. We can't say enough about these guys. Wildington and Fox are really doing a good job for Lafayette running the football. And both made big plays tonight on offense for the Commodores. Well, both have scored on six-yard touchdowns. And, uh, man, I'm telling you. And now Fodren is one two punch, man. Got it going on through the Commodores. First and 10 at 12 with 3.06 to go. And it looks like Lewis is going to want a timeout. We'll take it with them. 3.06 to go in the ball game. Commodore lead 24 to 9. But they're threatening to get back right after this with more Commodore football on the upstairs. At Merchants and Force Bank in Oxford, their customers are number one. Personal and business checking accounts available. Savings account, IRAs, Christmas Club, and Kids Club account, as well as CDs. One of their friends representatives will help you select the best option for your needs. Internet banking service is available for those on the go. Serving you in three locations, that's Merchants and Farmers Bank in Oxford. Three oh six. Goes under center. Phillip Fodder in the backfield. Hands to Fodder. Cuts it back inside. Inside the five. In the end zone. Touchdown. Josh Fodder. And the Commodores are up. Third is hip. With three. And he. More. You say Ryan. No. Great run. Josh Fodder. Big run that time. The touchdown with foul leads 30 to nothing here. With six left and four, back off an extra point. And he's perfect. Tune Rosaford. Uh, Rosaford has actually won a couple of ball games. They were 2 and 0.
anyway. And, and that's good. We'll see you next week. Tune in with the first Commodore football.